Hi and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca. I'm also known as 4 Kids at 147. I'm just going to get some more diamonds straight in my tray. But now I'm going to give you tip and trick number 21, which is another alternative way to help get your diamond straight, especially on a square diamond painting. It basically works as long as the diamonds that you're using touch. So on some round paintings, for example, you if you made the diamonds touch, the squares are actually a little bit too big for them to touch. Um, but many of the good quality round diamond painting companies, the diamonds do need to touch, but of course only ever so slightly because the diamonds are round. But it's primarily a great one for squares. This is actually the one, the, the square tip and trick that I favour over any else, any others. The last tip and trick I did, I did this section in a checkerboard method. But the, set, the one that I actually prefer is steps. So I do still get myself my straight edges on either side. And then I build up steps because then I've got two different corners to nudge the diamond into and I can come at it from the right because I am right-handed. You possibly come at it from the left if you're left-handed and I come into it from the left and push the diamond in. Push the diamond into my little spot where my glue dot's not stickier than my canvas. Push it in from that side and I always try and pick up the diamond just on the edge. I'm not sure if you can see it, let me, let me find something colourful. Can you see that? I've sort of got the edge of the diamond rather than directly on the top. And then I push it in. So I'm putting it in sideways as I've picked it up sideways. And I push it into basically my two edges that I have. And I build them up that way so that I can create myself steps. And how big I make my steps can depend on the section I'm working on. It can also depend on, you know, if I've got a huge section, quite often what I'll do is I'll just build myself a series of four steps. And in my head, I'll, I'll be doing that counting. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, sometimes I do five, sometimes I do big long stretches of steps, but quite often I'll just, my favourite number to go to seems to be four. Let me get that one to push in. And I do a row of four all the way across. And I'll just keep going until that section is done. So let's, let's pretend that I've reached the edge of the section that I need to do and then of course the next time then I'll only be placing three if I'd reached reached my edge then I'll place two this glue dot is proper sticky then I'll place one so I've got all my little section and then I'll go back up and in this case it's a section of three at the moment and I'll carry on my next row of steps until I get to the end. And if one, you know, decides to go off somewhere, if you're on poured glue, like this is, often you can just use your pen to nudge it into place. If you're using double-sided tape and you happen to place it well over here, you know, completely in the wrong place, you may have to take it off and put it back on again. But if you're working on poured glue, often you can just use the edge of your pen to nudge it into place. But I do like this method, as long as you've got square diamonds that are the size of the square, so nice quality ones that fit snugly. I do really, really like this method for filling in a section. I do myself my nice big long strip to give me 
a basic edge and then I'm just pushing them in to each section and I don't particularly then have to have to think about it either I'm just pushing them into the corner using the two that are already there as a guide as to where they need to go and as I say as long as it's a good quality painting that you have or you know with square diamonds that actually fit the space you'll find that you get them all tucked in without having that gap so sometimes what can happen is you can end up with gaps and your diamonds start overlapping too many squares and they take up you know more squares than they should so by pushing them in to the gap you can always use the line on your canvas to check you know that you're doing it right but you can just push them into place and then you'll get a really nice snug fit over the whole of your section so I hope that helps um, people on working with squares a couple of different ways over the last couple of tips and tricks of how it can help you to place them and to place them straight but the best way to get them straight is to practice and for that you just need to do more diamond painting which is not a bad thing but and just a little tip and trick today for you for number 22 and this is in relation to squishies again now these or what we call squishies are little pen grips so they often come in some kits not all kits but in some kits they come for you to put on your pen for you to make it a little bit bigger a little bit easier to grip but they have so many other uses so I've already given a tip and trick I think it was number two for using squishies with your trays um, and if you go to my website addmorezest.com there is a section called under videos and you will find all the tips and tricks so far to date where I am trying to reach 100 but anyway I digress. The next tip is you can use these on your tweezers. So there are some people that prefer to use tweezers over a pen, especially sometimes on the square paintings. But also um, special diamond paintings, quite often when they're different sizes, it's nice to use tweezers, but they're a lot thinner than a pen can be occasionally. And it can get a little bit harder to to grip so there's a few different ways you can use them so you can put them over the end if you tend to sit your tweezers maybe in the crook of your hand a little bit more and that will stop them digging in that way if you push it down too far it will cause the tweezers to be shut too much but if you just use them on the end it can help um, just in the crook of your arm on, on a lot of repetitive tweezering. The other option is to actually put them on either side of the tweezers. Now, of course, this gives a little bit more resistance when you are trying to actually pick something up. So it would probably work better on big things, but even two tweezers, two two squishies on either side will probably pick up a diamond because the gap there is not as big so if you want a little bit more resistance and a little bit softer the other option of course if you do like them on the end but you find the gap is too big is if you just cut them in half because you can cut these into into about six different pieces then what you can do is actually have them right near the end where you grab them um, but they won't be giving resistance further up with the excess being left there and then you can use it to pick up your diamonds and you get to get quite a bit closer together if it'll focus you get to get quite a bit closer together um, before it gives you any trouble whereas when they're a bit further up of course it hits further up before it hits down there so 
Squishies are amazing. They are worth having about. So do save them out of your kits because it's amazing how often they do come to good use. Also, if you do happen to lose the tip, I'm very surprised I found tweezers with an actual cover still attached because I lose these all the time. But for that, you can just pop a squishy over the top and just stop yourself, stop you stabbing yourself with the end of the tweezers. At least it's got something soft. Always good if you've got little ones running around as well. Let's try not as good with a small one. Um, it does still work though, but I think the longer one is probably a little bit safer because it does get to grip a little bit more down here without having the end sticking out. But yeah, do keep hold of those little squishies. They are handy for all sorts. But I hope that's helped some of you that like to use tweezers often. Uh, but do keep in mind your squishies. If you ever find that you're, you know, getting an irritation from anything, do bear in mind that you might just be able to put a squishy on it and it'll all be happy. And I brought Mr Quackers along today. Look at him. Um, to help with tip and trick number 23. So in the past tips and tricks, we have discussed using an easel, which I use, I use lots. We've discussed working with large paintings. We've discussed using cover paper um, instead of the clear paper. But one thing that some people do find is that while they like using an easel, they actually find that they can't diamond paint quite as long because they're holding the tray while they place the diamonds and they find that, you know, it can, it can be a bit too much for them. Depending on, you know, ability, there can sometimes just be things like cramp in the hand, it could be you're just diamond painting too much, but hey, who wants to stop diamond painting because somebody said it was too much or because of pain in your hand? Not me. So my tip and trick for today is to help you with your tray while working on an angle. Now this can work on easels, it can also work on the likes of drafters tables. Uh, some people have, have the space and the ability to have a nice big one of those. I'm just not ready to kick hubby out of my life so I can have one. So I use an easel. <laughs> um, but there are things that can help you. Now this one's got numbers on it. It doesn't come with numbers on it. Um, I did actually pull this out and give it a go in my June whipping chat, I think. I think it was my June. And I managed to pick up my Sharpie pen off my diamond painting. So they don't come like this. Um, but this one is from Purple Pelican. And it's slightly sticky on both sides, but not too much. Um, but it has got some stickiness to it. But what you can do with this, and what I did do, and currently pulled off some paper, is you can stick this either on your diamond painting, and it will come up, or you can stick it on your cover paper and it will peel up, but it will also stay pretty well. Considering cover paper is like a wax coating, it sticks really well. It sticks really well on diamonds, which are plastic. But because it's sticky on both sides, you can then stick your diamond painting tray on it. So your diamond painting tray is now at the same angle as your easel which frees up your diamond painting hand so that you're just using your pen. And if you're, is it ambidextrous? If you can use both hands, you can switch with your pen and keep going all day. Um, and it will hold your tray while you diamond paint. Now, people may be like, hang on, your diamonds are gonna fall everywhere. Well, if you have the right kind of tray, that shouldn't happen. So I've put quite a few diamonds in there. Oh. 
and I'm throwing them out because I'm that kind of person because I'm on camera. So I'm going to try and do my gentler shake. So I do my little shake like I normally do. I like to work from one side where I can. So once I've got them lined up, I shake any few little excess ones down here. And then I'll put my diamonds on and they're not falling out. So I can get my pen and I can get my diamonds from here. And if I try and get it to come off the pen, I can get them from down here. I can move them about and it's only when I give them enough of a push for them to sandwich themselves together. So if I just move them into a line, I'm all good. If I push them a bit further, then yes. The apple taught us that gravity will eventually make them come down. But if you have a nice tray that has got deep enough ridges, deep enough ridges there so that your diamonds line up nice, you can still have them on the same angle as your easel while you diamond paint away. Once you're done, slowly take your tray off with any other diamonds, deal with exchanging it, and you can even peel off your mat and move it wherever you need to, according to whatever section you're working on. And if you have a special one like me, you can have numbers on it too. <laughs> uh, I have seen these available, not as big, this, I must say, this one from Purple Pelican is great because it's, it's a nice chunky size. But I have seen some slightly smaller ones actually sold in the car section of some places. They are sold um, for you to put your phone on in your car to stop your phone sliding about. Well, you know us diamond painters, we like to change everything up and make it all about diamond painting. So if you have one of these little car holders, car phone holders, go and pinch it out your car and you can use it for your diamond painting while doing, and you know, while doing your diamond painting and you've either got a hand free if you're somebody that can diamond paint with both hands or the even better option and the option that I like, you can have a brew in this hand while you diamond paint with this one, maybe some chocolate, maybe some jellies. Whatever your heart desires, you could even just put your hand down and let it have a rest from a busy day. It's up to you. But yeah, if that's something that you struggle with for any reason, or whether you just purely want the option to be able to have a brew um, while you're diamond painting and not have to put anything down, then get yourself a nice sticky pad. I'm also going to get rid of my little round orange diamond that's found its way into Mr Quackers and I will save some of this for my next tips and tricks video so do stay tuned they come out regularly I'm trying to get to 100 we'll see how far we get and maybe one of these days I will clean the numbers off the back of my little sticky pad but for now it works exactly how I want it to and I hope that helps some of you. And today, Mr. Quackers is back for tip and trick number 24. So this one is in relation to getting a straight edge. So I am using tip and trick number 23. I figured we would have this in action so that you guys see exactly how it does work when placing diamonds. But this tip and trick is in regards to getting a straight edge. Now, if you are working in the middle of the painting, quite often you've got the diamonds you've already placed to help you get a straight edge. I have discussed doing step diamond painting and doing checkerboard effect diamond painting in previous tips and tricks. But when you start, you tend to have a straight edge. Albeit, I've done quite a bit of Mr. Quackers, so my straight edge is down the bottom. In fact, it might have been Mr. Quackers that I first showed this tip mixed in with some others. Uh, this is the first time he's been a part of my individual tips and tricks series. But I like to use a gift card for a straight edge, so I have a very apt one. This is a hobby craft does need to go in my purse at some point, otherwise 
I'm never going to actually use it in Hobbycraft because it's constantly in my diamond painting things. It actually goes in my cover paper holder. It sits in there. Maybe one day it'll make it back to my purse. Maybe I'll have to see if I can get a second one off, the second one off them. Um, but I like to use a gift card just to help me get that first straight edge. So you place it really quite close to to your edge but not you don't want to leave a big gap because you basically want to use it to butt against but you don't want it too far in that all your diamonds go the wrong place so take a little bit of time while you get your gift card could be a ruler anything like that placed and then you start from the bottom and if you are doing a corner then get two gift cards and you use the edge of the gift card to butt against. So I am doing, of course, a completely different section of Mr. Quackers than what I should be. I normally work from left to right, but I needed a clean edge to work on. So I'm stacking them like blocks, though they're not likely to fall. I'm gonna put my hand down. Let's pretend it has a brew. Um, we'll zoom you in so that you can hopefully see a little bit more what I'm doing. But I'm still trying to keep my tray on my little mat from Purple Pelican all readily available. So my tray is staying put. The last tip and trick worked. And I'm using my gift card for this tip and trick to place my diamonds and using the gift card to butt against as well as the diamond I've already placed. If I'm working on a corner then two gift cards it is. You can potentially still use um, a gift card somewhere in the middle of your painting. You do have to be really careful with that though. I mean this painting is poured glue because it comes with the clear cover. I've added these opaque ones, but it comes with a clear cover. It is poured glue. And that canvas is a little bit more forgiving for you to be able to use the card to potentially place somewhere in the middle. With double-sided tape, you could find that it pulls it up. So you do need to be careful. But that is my straight edge. That can either stay there. If you do find that your diamonds move a little bit, then maybe leave your gift card there. There is a, such a thin sliver of an edge of glue over the edge of this canvas. I mean, it's tiny. It's probably two millimeters. So less than a quarter of a centimeter, less than the size of a diamond hanging off the edge but it's enough to hold on to this you know it'll let me take it off but it's enough to hold on to it ever so lightly while I'm doing this but you could keep it there if you do find that your diamonds slide about maybe um, sometimes it can depend on the glue you have on your painting sometimes it could be that you don't have a steady hand or you have quite a heavy hand and sometimes it causes the diamonds to move. So if need be, leave your gift card there to stop your diamonds being nudged off the end of the canvas. And you can just keep building up your different sections. If you were gonna use a gift card, say in the middle, you decided you actually wanted to start over here I would be tempted to hold your gift card, which if you use step 23, tips and tricks 23 and have a mat for your tray, you can do, but I'd be more tempted to hold it. The reason being then it's not touching as much of the glue because the primary reason for this glue is for your diamonds to stick to. You really don't wanna be sticking a gift card to it especially don't use a paper one this only works with the plastic gift cards 
if you put one that's cardboard you could find that you have the messages from that gift card imprinted for life um, but they can be used somewhere else I would just hold it so that you're only put in that very thin sorry <laughs> I forgot I zoomed in so you're only put in that very very thin edge against your canvas and then you're butting up to it that way but it can be done so if you like straight edges whether your edges be in the middle of the canvas or more importantly on the far side of your canvas get yourself a gift card of some sort if it's a gift card that makes you smile all the better um, maybe it could be a gift that you got for Christmas you spent the money on it and you still got the card pop that one in with your diamond painting goodies or in with your cover paper like I do and you've got one handy and ready for every time you come across that straight edge. And now I have tip and trick number 25 for you. We are a quarter of the way through. I'm hoping to hit 100 hip tips, hips, tips and tricks. Um, we'll see how far I get, but we're a quarter of the way through. This is number 25. And this one is in relation to the Elizabeth Ward storage system. Now, um, many people do use this, but it's not the cheapest storage system, so it may not be for everybody. However, don't go off this video yet, because it may give you a tip or a trick for other types of storage that you may have that has the same sort of thing. So the Elizabeth Ward storage comes, um, the one I have has multiple different sizes. I've got four different sizes of containers. They open up by a little latch here, um, which you sort of have to get your nail under to be able to open up and then tip out your diamonds. I really like this storage um, for many paintings. It's bigger. So that is, that is something that does limit when I use it because of its size. But the actual container pots themselves are fantastic. Even the little ones hold loads. They do really hold loads, flat across the bottom. So if you only need a couple, you can dip your pen in and sort of use it like a tray. Um, but yeah, I do really like them. However, if... I end up with nails breaking so that they're really short, which seems to be happening quite a bit. Or if I do manage to get my nails starting to be done again, which I did pre-COVID, but haven't had done for probably about two years, then sometimes opening these containers can be more of a struggle. If I've either got no nail, which I know at the moment I have like nothing on, on, on one finger, um, or you know maybe you've got a sore hand, or maybe you've got a nail that's splitting, anything like that, it can be, well I can't use that storage, it's a pain. That's not the case. These tweezers, which I've done at least one tip and trick on, probably will have a few more. Um, Quite often you can get these, these tweezers in some um, of the higher end kits that send you tweezers with them. And these are, these are from Evermoment. But the ends of these tweezers can be really, really handy. And if you just pop the end of that tweezer underneath, you can just use that to open up your pot. It doesn't give too much disturbance to the pot, you know, so that you're likely to spill all your drills, for example. And I just like to sort of get it, put it into the plastic so it just goes underneath and just twists slightly. And of course, because I'm trying to do it on camera, it doesn't work the same, but if you try to twist it slightly, it just helps it to pop off that little lip, which allows you to get in it properly. Just give it a little little wiggle and it pops off and opens up and it can be used on other types of storage that are the same so there are I mean um, when I say the same I don't mean exactly the same but have this sort of lever 
it's amazing how many you can use it for. I do suggest that you either make sure you have your end tip on your tweezers because as you may have seen when I'm going to use that it's digging into part of my hand. So I do suggest you either have your cover or use a previous tip and trick where you put one of the squishies on the end because you don't want to stab yourself. You don't want to cause any injuries. I've already got an injury. That was a fight with a 3D printer. Um, but this can be really, really helpful because it's something you have handy as well, often. I, off, I have a set of tweezers. Well, I have quite a few floating about, but I definitely have a set of tweezers in with my diamond painting things, my diamond painting tools that I may, may or may not need depending on what diamond painting I'm doing. But they're always handy, they're always near my diamond paintings. So it's great for getting these little pots open so that you can tip them in, do your diamond painting and carry on. So that is my tip and trick for today. Um, it makes the, using this Elizabeth Ward storage a lot nicer for me, even you know whether I have my nails done or whether they're completely shot to pieces and really, really short. It helps either way. So it's always handy to keep your set of tweezers aside and don't think because you have no nails that you can't use beautiful storage. And it's time for tip and trick number 26. Now, this is in relation to a little tip for when you have finished a painting. So, here's a painting I've finished. Ta-da! I recently de-kitted this painting. And somebody may choose to frame the painting, or you may choose to display your painting in a display book, which is what my choice is with this painting. I don't have a particular place it's going to go. So I am gonna pop it into my display book, which I have discussed in a previous tip and tricks video. But it's not in relation to how you display it or how you store it. This tip and trick is actually in relation to the little ledger. I'm just wrestling out a piece of card. Um, it's in relation to the bits that you may cut off. So when I display in my display book, I choose to cut all the way around the edge of my diamonds. And I often do this when I'm framing as well. Depends on the size of the frame. But I often will cut all the way around the diamond painting and more often than not, you'll see me get rid of all the bits from around the edge. And I'm trying to cut this sort of as quick as I can, but I'm also trying to make sure that I'm straight because I don't want to annoy myself by looking in my display book and go, that's the one that I tried to cut dead fast. And it didn't work. Um, okay. Maybe I shouldn't have pulled the washi tape off the off the edges before I decided, but it looked a bit better on camera with the washi tape not on it. So I decided to take it off. And now the double-sided tape from over the edges is attaching itself to me. But yeah, quite often I will cut all the way around the edge, whether I'm framing it or putting it in a display book, or even hanging it on the wall. Either I hang it on foam board, which, you know, the edge has no reason for. Quite often in a frame, I actually stick the picture itself to the mount that comes inside a frame. So again, I don't need the border. Sometimes I do keep the border on. It does really depend on how I'm framing it. But quite often you can cut a border off and you can get rid of everything and just throw it all away. If you do mount something on, for example, a piece of foam board and it goes up on your wall, what do you do if a diamond falls off? Now, you can adopt the attitude of, well, I'll find the closest match and I'll just 
you know, put a colour on there that looks right, which is perfectly fine to do, and more often than not, you'll never notice. But some people like to make sure that they're putting what they call the right diamond on there, or maybe it's in a high traffic area and they think it is, you know, diamonds are likely to fall off. It's rare, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with being prepared, should we say. So there are a few different options that you can do. The easiest thing to do, I mean, you can photocopy the ledger, the ledger store it in maybe a logbook, a diamond painting logbook that you've got. You could take a photograph of it and keep it on your phone alongside, you know, the, the painting, alongside whatever it is. If you use a display book, like I do, so for example, for this one, I could stick it with it. Um, if you're putting it in a frame, you could sandwich it behind the painting. But, I mean, many people will just put the legend with the picture. But my display book, I like to see the picture. So what would probably be the safest option for me is actually putting it on the back. Now, when I stick into my display book, I use one sheet per painting normally. Occasionally, I will have two on it. So, for example, this is one that I've not yet cut down. I have other plans for this. I would put these two in the same, on the same page because they both fit with a nice border around them. So, I'm just going to have a look how much sort of space I might need to give. Maybe I'd do one to the side. Maybe let's do it like that. So if I try and keep that up in that top corner, I will be able to add that painting to it later. But you can imagine this is a full one. So I like to stick them in my display book with double-sided tape, which I'm trying to find, and knocking stuff on the floor in the process. Now, this tip and trick you can use regardless of, of where you're putting your painting. So you could be putting it in a frame. You could be putting it in a display book. You could be putting it on some foam board. Which, whichever of those options that you're doing, even hung up on stretcher bars, you could still make this method work as a way of keeping your legend or your list of Basically, it's your list of symbols and colours <clears throat> with your diamond painting at all times. So for the purposes of mine, I do only use one side of my display book. So one side of the piece of card. I don't use the other side for a diamond painting. I like to have each of them on their own individual piece of card so that I can take them out and move them about. And on my big 30 by 40s, I can throw them in a frame and switch them about however I want. So for me, this is the best option, is to stick this, quite simply, on the back. On the back of this piece of card, if I can get the double sided tape, it's because I've ripped it rather than cutting it because I was being lazy. But if, if I stick that onto the back, then should a diamond ever come off this, I could always take it out of the log book, have a look, find what, I could I'd be able to see what symbol's missing, find out what colour had fell off and pop it back on. Because I keep all of my diamonds, they're all in my spares. And I haven't done this on, on previous ones, but you get the idea. So this painting that I last put in, this is the back of that piece of card. I don't use the back to stick another painting to. I only use one side of it. So for this one, I can pop that inside. My little key is tucked down there safe on the back of the painting. 
And if anything happens to this, I've got that reference. So when you are framing, especially if you may be giving it away, or if you're framing it on something with no glass in the way, then maybe consider keeping your little key or your little ledger from the side of your painting and either tucking it inside the frame or if it's on foam mount board, just stick it to the back. If it's on a hanging, you know, one of the hanger things that's a strip of wood at the top and a strip of wood at the bottom, again, just stick it to the back of your diamond painting. It's not going to stop how it looks. I did a ballet image for my niece in Australia that I actually took to her. I took it rolled up on the plane and we framed it while I was there. And what I actually did was I taped, or I think it was taped, to the back of the frame, not only the ledger to say what each colour was, but I also taped a little bag of each of the diamonds on it. Um, my mum is a diamond painter, so if any fell off and they needed help with it, my mum was there. But it had a few of each diamonds in the back of it as well, so that should anything happen, they could put the diamonds back on and it wouldn't be a ship to the UK and a ship back to Australia type thing. So it can really help if you're gifting some as well. And that's probably the longest tip and trick I've done so far, maybe. Maybe it's because I'm trying to work out a way to describe it. But yeah, keep hold of your ledgers if you want to be able to know what diamond it is that's gone missing, if a diamond goes missing. I've not had it on any of mine yet, but that doesn't mean it won't happen and it doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Um, it's just a preparation step that you can take just to be able to breathe yeah. easy. This is a tip and trick number 27. So some people I know do still use the likes of the clear covers, things like that. We've been through different tips and tricks for that. But what this is in relation to is if you happen to have a section, let me zoom in. So if you have a section like this, so as you can see, this is, while there's blocks, it is also quite a bit confetti in the fact that there is lots and lots of different sections. And people have different levels as to how they cope slash can struggle with this. I'm sure many diamond painters, in fact, probably all diamond painters, have had that time where you have completed the block that you're working on, for example. So you've tipped out your colour, you've tipped out, for example, your black, and you're quite happily dotting away, and you're going here and you're going there, you know, and you're getting all your different symbols down and you do the whole section, you put your diamonds away and you see one you've missed. We've all done it. It's so frustrating, but it does happen. However, there are, you know, times when it can happen more than others. And quite often it is when you've got a very, very busy area with a lot of symbols going round. Now, these black ones are fairly easy to spot. Some of these sevens, for example, that are here might be a little bit trickier because there's a few over here and there's a few up here. So today's tip and trick is in relation to that. And that is use your cover paper more than you've ever used it before. So this is the section that I've taken off to do. But what I can also do is sort of divide that section up a little bit more. So I've just got three rows exposed at the moment. And I quite like sometimes when I've got a very busy piece like this is to actually go across, all the way across in a row. So I'm doing row one with all of this diamond. Now you could put your cover paper further down and only expose the one row if that's the way your brain comprehends it a little bit easier. 
but um, or you could do it like this where you just do all of them in that section of of three of a row of three because then your eye is not scanning all the way over the section your eyes are just looking at this little bit and you get in all that symbol done in this section just in this little block of three now the reason we often do bigger sections as diamond painters or the reason i do is i wouldn't want to do each of my sections in general as a three because i would be constantly tipping diamonds out of my tray and tipping diamonds back into my tray so if that was all I was going to do, I'd then have to tip all my diamonds back in to my storage to then get them out for the next row. So I like to do a fairly nice size section, but sometimes it can get confusing. So what you can then do is once you've done that row of three is you can then move it up. So you're exposing the next row of three. Now, if I just grab a sheet of cover paper from here, what you can also do to help yourself and this can get harder as you go along because there's less for it to stick to. Um, and this one doesn't want to stick that much because it is only a row of three. But you can always just hold it there just to stop your eye rechecking an area you've already done. And do your next batch of three. Now, this does get harder the more diamonds that you place into your section because, of course, it's no longer sticky for your cover paper to hold on to it. But by then, there's less symbols to look at as well. So you don't find yourself missing symbols anywhere near as much when you get nearer the end of your section. It's normally right at the beginning. So you can either use the cover paper to help you and that's often the easiest way because it just blocks out the rest from your vision. Your eyes don't take it into account at all. Um, or go row by row throughout your section. And if need be, you can always use your piece of cover paper near the end just to double check your rows. So let me just put the rest of these diamonds. Of course, I've picked one that's got Lots and lots of black, so I'm practically into a whip and chat by the time I get them all placed. But for example, now I've placed those into that section, what I could do is just use my cover paper just to highlight a row, do a quick scan. Yep, got them all. Yep, got them all. Yep. Yep. You know, like just a little cross check for yourself when you've finished a section. And of course, you can go up higher, so this could go into a chunk of five. This cover paper is more likely to stick a little bit better now because it's got a bigger section to sit onto. Um, and your tray will hold the rest. But cover paper can be used in many, many ways. And if you do find yourself constantly missing symbols um, and not quite realising, you know, just if you find yourself doing it a lot and it is extremely frustrating it's so frustrating when it happens then use your sheets of cover paper that you've taken off from other sections to just help dull that chaos a little bit for you so you can see where you're going quite often if I have a very busy section I only need to do the top one because the diamonds place know that I'm not messing with that row. But every now and then I do get a sheet of cover paper and just go down row by row, depending on how clear the canvas is and how clear the symbols are, just so that my eyes are just looking at the row above that cover paper line. And it just helps me to scan and check I've not missed any. So hopefully that will save you guys some time dipping in the pot to try and rescue those couple of diamonds that you found in a completely different section 
and it's time for tip and trick number 28. I have um, kept my Minions painting out because this is a perfect example of how you can use this tip and trick. So for anybody that hasn't seen this Minions painting before, this is my very, very large, very, very long painting um, that is a lot longer, you know, lengthwise than it is the height okay so because of that I actually work on it on its side because this is a lot more manageable and I can roll up in effect the big parts now I have done tips and tricks on working with a large painting and I use this one as an example so I roll up inwards the large end that I've not done I roll outwards the diamonds that I have placed and then this is a lot more manageable to slide across my easel. However, there is one thing about turning diamond paintings round, which I do very, very often. I am often turning, turning my diamond paintings round to make it nicer to work on the section I'm on. And that is that the symbols turn. So if I zoom you in, so you can see if I go the right way. Now, everybody's brain works different. So for some people, let me find a pen I can point with. So for some people, this number two, for example, will still read as number two to them, even though it's on its side and it's the wrong way. Same with number seven, number one, the letter C, the letter T. Where it can get really tricky and where it sometimes, you know, your brain has to do a little bit of extra thinking is when it comes to arrows. So this arrow to me is facing up because it's an upright arrow. This one is facing down. However, because this painting is actually, I've turned it, if I put it back the right way, if I can get it past my lights, uh -huh, this is where it might be fun. Let's see if I can get it to scoot up. Okay, so I think it's got most of it in shot. I'm very zoomed in and it's very climbed up against the wall. But if I have a look at this arrow, which is not showing you. Okay, I'm not quite in far enough. This arrow is actually pointing to the right. And this arrow here is actually pointing to the left. They're not pointing up or down at all. That's not the way they were charted. They were charted as a left arrow and a right arrow. Now, when it comes to your diamonds and your container, let me zoom you back out so that you can see. So when it comes to the actual container that you're using, so, for example, let's get the same ones. So this is the arrow to the right, which on here, it's actually upright. And on the other one, which is where, there it is. So on this one pointing to the left, on my canvas at the moment now it is actually pointing down. Now there are two ways that you can help to combat this. Um, some companies do use different colours for the arrows which can really help you to make sure you're getting the right one. Now in this storage this these are round bottles so I could just turn the bottles around for those two so that I see an up arrow and I see a down arrow. However, if you have a painting that you are actually constantly turning round to different angles, so it may be that I'm working on it this way this time, but I could decide to actually turn the canvas the other way um, and actually have that arrow pointing down and this one pointing up. So maybe I'd decide that actually that way is better for me. And this works more so with smaller paintings, but I could decide that that was nicer. So then my up arrow is actually down and my down arrow is actually up. 
and of course my right and my left would change around as well. I may have some times where I decide to work on the canvas this way. So maybe when I'm at the bottom, I'll work on it this way. But when I'm at the top of it, I actually work on it this way. Yeah, so there are many, many different angles that you can move your canvas to be best for comfort, um, for ease. You don't want to be stretching too far. And the last thing you want to be doing is turning your bottles round each time you turn your canvas round. <coughs> Excuse me. So one thing you can do if you find that that's something, you know, that, that takes a little bit longer for your brain to fully commute. Letters tend to be easier. We live with letters all the time, but we live with arrows point pointing in every direction. So we don't automatically change the direction of it like we would do with the number two. Our brain will still read that as a number two, even though it's facing that way. Is turn your, cam your, your storage round. So for this one, I would of course put it the opposite side of me because of the lid. But I would then have my storage here while working on my painting which means when I'm looking for a blue up arrow, I can see straight away the blue up arrow and I can see the down arrow. So the reason it actually took me a while to find that arrow before when I had my, when I had my painting, when I had my things like this is because my brain was still looking for a down arrow when actually the symbol is an arrow pointing to the left. So turn your painting and turn your storage at the same time. You'll still find that for the likes of the number one and the number two, your brain will still associate it as being number one or number two because it is a popular thing, a popular number letter that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. But things like these little chevron arrows, Maybe even these triangles that they took into different corners. Hashtag not so much. Maybe the dots, depending on how many symbols of dots that you have. You will have the visual in the same direction as your canvas, which means when you're trying to match them up, your brain will associate that's, a, that's a, an arrow to the right whereas actually it's a down arrow but it will match your canvas so that's my tip and trick for today when you turn your cap don't be afraid to turn your canvas because the idea is that you enjoy the diamond painting process so enjoy it just turn your storage at the same time and depending on what storage you have you know you may well find that that is really easy to do um, and you won't actually have to change sides because of a lid. <laughs> It'd be much easier if I had the diamond paint in the other way because my storage could sit that way. But having said that, when I'm working on the other side of the canvas, I have my storage on the other side anyway. So depending on what storage you're using, um, you can make it work for any. But yeah, by all means, turn your diamond painting canvas around, just turn your storage with it to make life a lot easier for yourself. Tip and trick number 29. Now I have had to place some items on a, just a piece of craft of paper um, to help the camera focus because otherwise I've got clear and white things on a clear and white desk. But today's tip is in relation to multi-places. Now this tip was given to me by a subscriber I don't tend to use multi-places. Um, I've not particularly given it its full time and due. Um, I'm quite happy dotting one at a time. But I know many people do use them. And um, this particular subscriber has like a little baggie with a selection of multi-places that they use. But you do find that depending on where they're from, um, it, there are many different sizes of multi-placers out there. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick this up at all, 
but on these white ones this one actually has the number four to say that it is a four placer and in turn this other solid white one has a number seven it's very faint it's it's embossed on the white so it's the same color but then you can have some clear ones that don't tell you at all now you can sort of work them out i mean the easiest way to work them out is to get yourself a diamond painting um, and and count the diamonds so this one is actually a three multiplacer but then this one is a four so it sort of mixes up as you go along this one is down as a seven whereas this one is actually a six so slightly smaller there are ones that go up to nine or ten but I couldn't find one when I was trying to make this video. Um, but the tip and trick that is, is advised is basically just get yourself a Sharpie. So I'm sort of going over the number that is already there, but also making it a little bit bigger. And I probably did not a very good job on that one. No, that doesn't look like a four. Let's try on the other side. Doesn't help that I'm holding it funny. But basically put a sharp um, sharpie mark on it to say that that one's a number four so this one was a number seven i'm going to go on the opposite side again and i'm going to put a seven with the line through it which means it's definitely a seven then this one was a three and this one's got a little concave on one side so let's go for the side that's not got as much of a concave and try and actually write a three that looks like a three it's not as dark in as many places. I'm just going over it and probably making it look even worse when I do. But you could do this one a bit neater. And this one was a six. So let's mark on this one that this one is a six. I say, you can probably write them a lot neater. But now, when you go to grab a multi-placer, you know exactly what multi-placer you're grabbing, how many diamonds it does. And it's also a constant reminder when it's in your pen. So when you're going to pick them up from your tray, because of course your tray will line them up into certain ridges, you've got a constant reminder, especially if you're on like a three or a four placer, you've got a constant reminder of how many diamonds you need on your tray together to be able to pick them up. Um, but I think that is loads easier to see for everybody to be able to just pick up your diamonds and do your multi-placing if you want with a three or a four or even all the way up to a nine or a ten placer if you are that good at it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, mark your multi-placer tips with Sharpie. It will help you to know which is which. You could always mark both sides if you do throw them into a baggie. Um, or if you just keep them on your pen, you've got a quick glance as to what size your multi-placer is. So that when you're diamond painting, it's just one less thing you have to think about. Hopefully that will help some of you. Time for tip and trick number three. 30. Now we did talk, I think it was last week, maybe it was the week before, I did a tip and trick in relation to working on the canvas sideways um, where you know you can turn your, your storage case to match the way your symbols are turned if you turn your painting the wrong way around, not the wrong way around, an alternative way around while you're working on it. But regardless of whether you turn a painting round or not, there can be sometimes, there can be symbols that are similar to another one. Or in turn, in this case, I've actually got two symbols that are the same. So I think it was a mistake made. One is a pale yellow, one is a pale pink, but they are the same symbol. I also then have some that are similar. I'd probably say those two are similar in relation to if I'm working on the painting because while the arrows are the opposite way, they both have green around them. And this is a round diamond painting. Whereas this one, 
has blue around it. So green and blue, I'm completely happy with those being different. Do I have any other arrows in here? So I've got three there. And sometimes this is a nice step to take just before you start. So here's my other arrow. But that one, while it's still a black arrow similar to that, this one has orange around it. So to me, that's that's different. I would look for orange as much as I'd look for the arrow. So I'm happy with those two being different, but I do think those two are very similar, especially if I'm turning my canvas around. I also, those two are the same, slightly different colours, but very pale colours. So therefore, to me, there's not a striking difference between those two. And then the other thing for me to be aware of is these two. So these two are both triangles. The triangles are both in blue. And then we have a brown and a burgundy. Now, while they are different colours, they could be very, very close, especially if your lighting is not perfect, if you have funny lighting. So you need to go by what suits you. So for example, these two are also corners, but one is yellow and one is blue. So to me, they are different because the colours are different and not close, couldn't be confused with each other the same way. And I mean, especially some of these corner ones can be tricky if you turn the painting. But what I want to be aware of when I'm working on this painting, so this is my large Minions painting, which is this one. I'm about up to here on it. I just started doing the Minion. So I'm about up to there. I've got quite a way to go. And I do work on that one bit by bit. I don't work on it all at the same time. I flip between paintings. Um, I like to have a large one on the go and I like to work on small ones in between but one thing you can do to help yourself is to highlight in some way the symbols that are very similar now some people do like to store them together and i have done that when i've got a lot of colors i will put all the arrows together so my brain is seeing them all which means i will relook at my canvas to make sure i've got the right one these are currently in dmc order so what I'm going to do for this, and you can do this whether you store them together or not, is I am going to highlight ones on the label that are similar to another one. So that one was similar to that one. And I'm using a pink highlighter because that's what I had near me. Then I felt that these two arrows were similar because they're both green. They go in different directions, but they're both green. So I'm going to highlight those two. And then the other two was this one and this one. Because they were both blue sort of corners, corner triangles or triangles. But they were both wrapped in dark uh, colours. So now... I have highlighted. Now you could highlight these in different colours. So if you had multiple highlighters, which I didn't have to hand, but if you do have multiple highlighters, you could highlight those two similar in pink, those two in green, those two in orange, for example, um, so that you find the matching one that's similar in the same highlight colour. So if you like your highlighters and have multiple, which I don't, I have one in here. Um, I probably could have found some of the kids, but I've thought about it as I'm saying it, <laughs> as I'm highlighting it. Sometimes these things just come to me. Um, so yeah, I now have highlighted all the symbols that are similar, which means when I go to do this painting and I go to pick up one that I think is a yellow slash, I'll pick it up and it'll be like, oh, that's a similar. Okay, is it definitely yellow or is it pink? 
and I can give myself that reassurance that I've double checked that symbol before I place it down. Um, and yeah, it's just another way of making yourself aware that there is something that is similar in your painting. So just to double check. Um, you can do that to as big or as small an extent as you want. So you could decide that all of these ones with the corner symbol, you're actually going to mark them all so that you know there's four of them. And in that case, you probably are better with different highlight colours. You could decide to highlight all the arrows, no matter what colours they are. You decide you want to highlight them all and you could group them all together as well and tie the two things together. And it's your way of cross checking just that one very small little step when kitting up could save you making a mistake that you regret later on um, and just gives you that little bit of extra peace of mind that each diamond is going where it's supposed to. Um, because as much as we all, all probably every single one of us watching loves diamond painting, there's something about redoing something you've already done. It just it just saps the enjoyment out of it. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you all so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.